Okay, so welcome everybody to this uh, National Geographic Learning webinar. Um, it's my first one of 2021. So happy new year to everybody. Um, and if you celebrate the Lunar New Year, then that is just around the corner as well. So not too far away now. Um, in today's model lesson for teachers of English to young learners, uh, you will learn teaching tips and ideas through taking part in the activities, because we believe the best way to learn something is by experiencing it. So today's lesson, today's model lesson, as you already know, is called Living Giants, and it's a school trip to the forest. So let me introduce myself. I, I can tell from the names in the chat box, I already know quite a lot of you, but there are some names I don't recognize. Uh, my name is Will Lashett, and I am the teacher trainer for the Asia region for National Geographic Learning. I am originally from the UK, uh, but I now call Singapore my home, which is where I am right now, uh, at home <laughs> in, my, in my apartment. Um, I have been teaching and training in English language teaching since 2001. So that make this is, will be my 20th year, which I, I find surprising and amazing. Um, yeah, and while we're talking about uh, teaching and teaching experience, uh, I would just like to do a quick poll, as I always do, to find out who we have here. So you will see on your screen now um, a poll question. Um, if you're on Facebook, um, I've put the question up here. You can type into the comment box if you like. So I just want to find out which segments you teach. Um, if you teach more than one, please select more than one. You can choose as many as you like. Uh, or perhaps you're not a teacher, and that's fine as well. So if you're not, you can select, I am not a teacher. So this is just to give me an idea of the type of uh, participants we have in today's session. So I'm going to give you a few more seconds. I can see that 65% of you have voted so far. See if we can get up to maybe 75, 75%. Okay, someone's typed in university. Okay, great. Uh, okay. All right, let's end the poll and share the results. Okay, so we can see that um, the bar in red there. Okay, 42% of you are teaching young learners. 22% very young learners, 38% teens, 20% university, 14% adults, and 12% of you are not teachers. But we can see that the, uh, the most common uh, segment that you are teaching is young learners, which is perfect because that is the, uh, that's the segment that we're concentrating on today. Um, you know, the, the, some of the ideas I'm talking about would certainly be relevant for other age groups as well. Um, the project that we're looking at would be a very good project also for teens um, or even for university students. I think it would be fun to do at any age. Um, yeah, so very good just uh, to let me know who we have here. So I'm going to stop sharing the results and move on. So as you can see from my background, um, our model lesson today comes from our Young Learner Programme Look. And uh, you can also see that it is a seven level series or seven level program for pre-A1 to B1 level primary or elementary school age children. So that's roughly for ages six to 12 years old. And I will talk a bit more about the program later um, just so that you know, okay, as we're looking at the materials, you know where it's from. It's from our program look. Okay, so today's lesson is from level four of Look, uh, which is aimed at young learners who are around 10 years old. So it's for approximately 10 year olds. Um, this level, level four, is a bridging level between A1 and A2 of the CEFR, which is roughly the high end of elementary uh, to the low end of pre-intermediate, um, if that makes it easier for you to understand the leveling. So kind of elementary to pre-intermediate level. Um, the lesson type is called a school trip. Um, in each level of look, there are three school trip lessons, and they are a, a special kind of lesson. Um, and it's designed to give 
a kind of well school trip or field trip experience um so by using an authentic video um we kind of feel that we're transported to somewhere new you know somewhere exciting um and we're learning about real people and real places um and i think it's a, a really great idea um and it gives the uh it gives more variety to the course for our students um so they, the students get to experience a new place um, right now on the screen, you can see a beautiful image, um, which is from Look Level 4. And I'd just like you to type into the chat box for me. Uh, can you describe a little bit about the image on the right of the screen? What can you see there? Let's see what we can get in the chat box. So just a quick description. What can you see in the picture? A vast sky, stars, right? Nighttime. A tree, starry sky, people in a camp with a bonfire. Yeah, very nice, a campfire or bonfire. And you can see almost a huge amount of the Milky Way up there. So many stars. In Singapore, when I look out at night, I can only see about three or four stars because of the light pollution. But here, you can really see a huge number of stars. Um, and someone, one of you said the, uh, a tree. So we can see one absolutely giant tree there. Um, can you type into the chat box for me? Um, what do we call the place where we can see a lot of trees together? We can call it the forest, right? Lots of people typing in the answer there. Exactly. And the forest or jungle, we've got, okay, another word there, woods. Okay, yeah, so we've got woods, forest, jungle. So slight differences there, aren't there? I think uh, to me, a woods is smaller. Um, a woods is like a smaller area. A forest would be bigger. And to me, the word jungle, um, I would say that has to be tropical, doesn't it? So whereas uh, a forest can be anywhere, um, a, a jungle would really be a kind of tropical forest with very thick, dense um, undergrowth as well as the trees there. But yeah, some very nice vocabulary coming out. And actually what you're doing here um, is exactly what I want to do um, as part of our first activity. So I'm going to change the slide. Um, and, you know, so in class uh, today, this is a model lesson, so I'm going to be, um, you're, you're going to be my students. And, you know, before we start, it's always a good idea, you know, before we open the book, it's a good idea to warm students up and get them ready for the lesson. So I want to activate and share our collective knowledge about the topic. So wh what do we know about forests? You know, what can we find in the forest? Um, so if we just ask this question to students, it might be a little bit difficult um, for them to think of a lot of ideas. Um, so what I like to do is to use um, a, a graphic organizer. So let me put that on the screen. So today we're going to use this, um, this spider map. And um, what I can do with the spider map, I'm just going to get my pen ready here. Um, yeah, what we can do with the spider map is that we can use it, okay, to kind of organize and get ideas, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, oh, I need to clear that. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get uh, the word forest, okay, up in the middle. So what I would do here, I would hand out, um, I would hand out this um this graphic organizer to my students in pairs, and then I'd get them to think of ideas, then we'd share ideas together. So we're gonna write forest in the middle. Next, we're gonna give them some categories, okay? So we're gonna have one category as animals, we're gonna have one category as adjectives to describe the forest, one category as activities you can do in the forest, and another category as other, so for any other things that they might think of. So by structuring it like this, we're, we're giving support to the students, um, we're scaffolding the task so that they're going to find it easier and they're going to generate more ideas rather than just saying trees and animals, okay? So it makes it much easier to get those ideas. So why don't we, um, why don't we have a go at this activity together? Um, I am going to uh, try and write some of your ideas down. So let's start with animals, okay? Let's start with animals. C can you type into the chat box for me? Um, what, what kind of animals might we find? Okay, so someone wrote insects. Okay, so let, let's put that up there. Okay, so we can find insects. We've got here lions, bears, okay, frogs. I like that one. Okay, frogs, uh, rabbit. 
Okay, so I can put some ideas down. Now, interesting. So we've got here things like, uh, okay, snakes, tigers. So that, I mean, obviously that depends where we are in the world. We've got iguana, okay, squirrel. I think they're very co common around the world. So I could add that one in here. Um, and, and we can lead here to an interesting conversation about, you know, um, what type of animal will obviously depend on where you are in the world. So um, tigers, um, they're very, very rare, aren't they? So even in places where traditionally we find tigers, we're very unlikely to see one. Um, so an interesting conversation we can have perhaps with our 10 year old students. Um, let's have a go now at adjectives. So I'd like you to give me a couple of adjectives. So how would you describe a forest? Can you think of any adjectives you can use? Okay, wet. Okay, right, wet, we've got here dense. Okay, lush. Okay, lush, we've got uh, cold. Okay, dark, right. Okay, dark, why is it dark? Because there's not a lot of sunlight gets through because of all the trees. Um, wet, okay, again, so that might depend on where you are. Um, I mean, there, there are dry forests as well in places that don't get much rain, but yes, in uh, certainly in Southeast Asia where most of us are, forests are going to be damp, okay? They're going to be humid, they're going to be wet. So nice words here, mysterious, I like that one. Okay, scary, right? Okay, so here, here we've got kind of adjectives which are not giving us a physical description, but giving us a description of how they make us feel. So a more personal level. That's interesting that we can get a mix of different adjectives there. Okay, let's let's uh, let's go to other. Let's go around in a circle, right? So, how about other? Okay, so what kind of other things or other words might we use to talk about a forest? Um, so let's see what other things. Um, okay, we've got tent. Okay, there we go. Tent. Okay, camp. Oh, okay, wrong word. Sorry, spelled that wrong. Tent. Okay, so we might go camping. That might we might include that over here. Uh, hunting. This might again be an activity. Um, how about uh, other objects you can find? Other objects you can find in the forest? Okay, twigs. Great. Uh, logs. Okay, great. So we've got parts of the trees. Uh, rotting animals. Bog. Okay, good. We might find uh, stones or rocks. Okay, a waterfall. Yeah, great. Okay, so a river. We often find rivers in forests. Wild animals. Dried leaves. Okay, I like that one. Leaves. Uh, we could also include here, we could talk about the different types of forest. Um, so we could talk about perhaps, um, we mentioned it earlier, um, a forest we find in the tropics, we're going to call the jungle. Um, there's another word which we use, which is similar to jungle, which is slightly more formal word. Can, you, can anyone think what that is? Another word for jungle begins with R has uh, suggested it's very wet. Yeah, rainforest, right, Diane? Okay, so we could talk about the rainforest or we could talk about the cloud forest, okay? Often in subtropical areas. So you can see with this activity, depending on the level of the students, you can really go into a lot of detail or just a little bit of detail, depending on the, your student's knowledge and depending on their age and ability. So this would be great activity for university or adult students, you know, whichever age you're teaching, this would be, um, this would be applicable. Um, how about activities? Okay, so I saw some, um, some great words earlier I'm gonna I can remember someone put in here stargazing okay so stargazing you'd obviously need to find a clearing because the canopy or all the trees above you would actually stop you seeing the sky uh, hunting okay yeah okay that if if you're allowed to do that um, depends on where you are in the world uh, trekking trekking or hiking Okay, camping, storytelling, right, some really nice ideas. And someone's put in there, uh, taking photos, right? Okay, let me write that one down. Okay, taking photos. Okay, great. So we've really got a lot of nice ideas here. Thank you for sharing, jogging. Okay, there we go. Uh, trail running, perhaps. Thank you for sharing all of your ideas. Okay, I'm going to clear my annotations there and we're going to move on to the next page. Okay, so now hopefully we're all warmed up. We've got our brains in gear thinking about the forest and we're now going to swap over to the classroom presentation tool. Okay, to um, have a look at the materials from the program. So just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. Okay, the classroom presentation tool or the CPT. Um, which is what I'm going to be using today. This is a digital resource. It has all of the student book content. 
It has all of the workbook content. It has all of the audio, the video, the games. It has interactive activities with all the answers and it has everything all in one place. So this is the resource, the digital resource that I'm gonna be using today. Yes, Kurt, it is a one hour webinar, you are right. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing, okay, for a moment and I'm gonna switch over onto my CPT. Okay, just give me a few seconds to, to, to do that. Okay, there we go. So hopefully now on my screen, uh, maybe you can help me. Can you type in, uh, what can you see? What can you see on your screen right now? Tree climbing, okay, perfect, right. And we can see a climber. Okay, well done. So how many people do you see? We've got tree climbers. How many? We've got three, right? Okay. Um, a lot of you put their, their, their climbing, they're observing. Why do you think these people are climbing the tree? Why do you think they're climbing the tree? The tree is sick. Okay, to do research, right, Indulika. Who does research on trees? What, what might their job be? Geologists, okay, geologists could be, biologists, okay, yeah, so um, definitely some kind of scientist, right? Okay, so they're scientists, perhaps botanists, perhaps biologists, um, and they, they're studying the tree, and may, maybe the tree is sick, or maybe they're trying to find something else about the tree. Um, so these people, the, these scientists, they're working in the forest. Can you give me any ideas who else works in the forest? What other kind of people might have a job in the forest? Forest rangers, perfect. Loggers, okay, or lumberjacks, right, loggers. Poachers, right, there we go. Forest, dendrology, I've never even heard that word, Kurt. Um, I'll take your word for it. Uh, dendrologist, okay, right. Um, so we've got lots of different people, forest rangers, conservationists, okay, great. Forest police or forest ranger, uh, greenpeace, okay, forest police, right, lots of different ideas. And someone put in there the word photographer, okay. Right, um, let's have a look. So sometimes scientists, um, they can record information by, by writing it down. And actually you can see uh, this lady on the right of the screen, she's actually got a notebook here and she's making notes, right? Um, what other ways could scientists record information? So apart from writing down notes, how else can they record information about what they're studying in the forest yeah so they can take video they can take photos they can use technology that's right um and what do we call someone who takes pictures what do we call someone who, yeah we call them a photographer okay perfect and um a photographer in the forest, what, what other things might they take photographs of? So they might take photographs of the trees. Uh, they might take photographs of wildlife. Exactly. So animals. OK, that's exactly right. So you're all very observant. OK, we've got lots of nice ideas here. And we've now kind of thoroughly introduced the topic. OK, so what we're going to do now um, is we're going to move on and have a look at this paragraph. You can see at the top left of the screen and we're going to have a go at the first exercise. OK, um, so you notice there that I was asking you lots of questions all the way through. So what we want to do, we want to encourage students to look closely at the photo. We want to get them to engage with the content. And the best way to do that is by asking questions. All right, so let's have a look over here. I'm going to zoom in. So I'm doing this. I'm just moving my mouse wheel and I can zoom in as far as I want. Um, and then we can see this paragraph over here. So we're going to read it, okay? Um, I'm going to read it out loud, okay? And you can just follow along with me. So today we're learning about redwood forests. You are going to watch wildlife photographer Michael Nick Nichols in action. He's taking photos of the animals and trees in a redwood forest on the west coast of the US, the United States. Redwoods are huge trees. Many of the trees are more than 1,500 years old. They're the tallest trees in the world, and their trunks can be nine meters thick. They can grow to more than 100 meters tall, so it's difficult to take photos of them. Nick needs to find some special ways to do it. 
Perfect. So there we've got our little bit of information, okay, to introduce there before we watch the video. Um, I want to draw your attention to what I think one of these words might be difficult, okay, for our students to understand. And I think it's this word over here, this word trunk. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about it. So in the picture, we can see a trunk. Can you tell me what color is the trunk? So a trunk is part of a tree. What color is it? It is brown. Okay, right. And is it big or is it small? Okay, it's big and it's thick, right? And is it hard or is it soft, the trunk of the tree? It's very hard, right? So we can see if I zoom out, okay, we can see that when we're talking about the trunk, we're talking about this. It's the main part of the tree, like the body of the tree, okay? This is the trunk here. It's the main part of the tree. We can also see another part of the tree, like these smaller ones coming off the trunk. What do we call these ones here? So we have the main trunk and then we have the branches. That's right, okay, these are the branches. And on the branches, we have, what do we have on the branch? Yeah, we have twigs, even smaller. And how about the green part that we see on the branches? What do we call those? Yeah, we either call them leaves, okay? Or um, if it's a pine tree, we have a different word. Does anybody know the word? It begins, yeah, we have needles. That's right, so we have needles on a type of pine tree. So leaves or needles, these are the green part. So, you know, ov obviously, you know, when we're, when we're looking at a paragraph like this, we need to make sure we pre-teach, okay, any important vocabulary so that our students understand it. We can easily do that by asking questions and using the image that we've got at our disposal. Okay, let's have a go at exercise number one. Okay, let's see how much you can remember. So um, I told you earlier the CPT has in, is interactive. So I, I just show you that again. So um, I'm clicking on these three dots here so we can do the activity. Um, and then we can see the question here. So it says, how, how old are the oldest redwood trees? Uh, Violet, you are first, you get one point. Diana is second, you get half a point. <laughs> um, you said 1500. Um, so if I click on this arrow to the right, it tells us the answer. They can be more than 1500 years old. And that I think is really incredible that a tree can get to that age. Um, this is something that we could easily exploit in the lesson. Um, you know, we could find out what was happening in the world 1500 years ago. I had a quick look earlier on at the world's population, the estimated population. So today we have 7.8 billion people in the world, right? 7.8 billion people. I found out that 1500 years ago, the estimated population of the world, I'm gonna type it into the chat box, was 210 million, which means that's just 3% of the world's population today. So when at the time that this tree that we're looking at on the screen there, the type of, by the time that tree started growing, there were only 210 million people in the world. And now there's almost 8 billion people in the world. So something like that to me, uh, you know, really uh, gets my imagination going. It makes me think about how different the world would have been 1500 years ago when that tree started growing. Let's have a look at the, the second question here. Um, it's a bit more difficult. Why is it difficult to take photos of redwood trees? Did, can anyone remember? Yeah, that's right, Ria. So because they are so tall, they're too, too tall. So you and also you're in a forest, so there are lots of other trees around. So you can't stand far enough back to actually take a clear shot of it. So it makes it very difficult to take the photos because they are very tall and they can reach almost 100 meters in height. That's right. OK, well done. Very nice. OK, now. Um, what we would do now, okay, if uh, this was a real lesson, lesson, I'd get the students to read this again, okay, to check their understanding. And then what I would also do, I would do an activity, an extra kind of, uh, an extra challenge, uh, which we can try a couple of next um, right now. Um, I would give them a, a word, okay, and I'd ask them to make a sentence using that word, okay. So if I put a word into the chat box here, 1500, okay, 1500, I would like somebody to type into the chat box, can you make a word related to what we're talking about here using the word 1500 and type it into the chat box for me. 
So let's see if we can get a sentence, okay, with 1500. Maybe it's a better idea if I take that away so you can't copy. So age, it is age, that's right. Um, but can you make it into a sentence? So why is 1500 relevant to the lesson today? Can anyone make a sentence for me about perhaps redwood trees? using the word 1500. There we go. Perfect, Diana. Thank you. It is probably more than 1500 years old. Most trees, most trees are more than 1500 years old. Okay, that's interesting. I, I don't think we can say most trees are more than 1500 years old. I think it's only very few, um, and in particular, these giant redwoods. So these redwood trees are more than 1500 years old. That's right. This is very nice from Ramirez. 1500 years ago, the redwood tree was just starting to grow. Excellent. Redwood, Marianne, redwood trees can grow to 1500 years old. Perfect. Or maybe we can say can live for 1500 years. Uh, let's try one more. How about the word trunk? OK, so trunk is the word that uh, I taught you earlier on, my 10 year old students. Can we make that into a sentence for me? Um, related to the information that we're studying. Trunk. OK, so can it, the trunk is huge. Great. And that's another word on my list, actually huge. That was another word that I was going to give you. So, yeah, the trunk is huge. Can anyone remember how thick the trunk can grow? The trunk is too huge, right? Well, we could say rather than two, maybe we could say absolutely. The trunk is absolutely huge. OK, so um, if we use the word two, it makes it sound like it's negative, like it's bad. Um, but, you know, we don't want to say that the trunk is bad. So better to use the word absolutely. Uh, these trunk is a, as wide as 15 meters. OK, so it wasn't 15. Let's check how much it was. Um, I think it was here. It says over here nine meters. So we can say the trunks can be. There we go. So uh, Ria has written it. The trunk can be nine meters in width, OK, or thick, as they use the word here. A redwood tree trunk can get really humongous, right? Nice word, OK, can be absolutely massive, can be humongous. OK, that's perfect. Thank you very much. So again, that's a nice activity. Um, we can get students to think about the vocabulary and to generate some language of their own. OK, let's move on and have a look at the second activity, which is the video. Um, so before we uh, before we watch the video, OK, we're going to have a quick look at the sentences here and explain the task. So uh, as you can see, um, as we're watching, we're actually going to uh, try and put these sentences into the correct order. So normally I would get students to read these out, but as uh, we can't on the webinar, I will read them myself. So A, uh, Nick takes some great photos of the owls. B, Nick sends a camera up the tree. Nick, C, Nick gives the owls food. D, the photos of the tree go onto Nick's computer. And E, Nick puts on a costume. OK, so this is what we're looking for, and we're going to put them in the right order. Um, just for fun, OK, and just to get, well, yeah, and to get you thinking a little bit, I'd like you to have a guess. Um, which of these, uh, can you guess the order for me? So into the chat box, if you would like to have a go, um, I want you to guess the order that you think they might appear in. Um, so really, when I give my students this activity, it's really, um, as I'm monitoring, I, what I don't want them to do is just say, uh, C, B, D, E, A. OK, what I want them to do is to discuss it. So I want them to really say the sentences. So what I would do in my class, the rule is they have to actually say the sentences. So they're reading them out. OK, it's really important that we encourage students to use the language and not just to take the easy option. So we've got lots of ideas here. E, B, C, A, D. OK, so someone thinks, Nick, uh, a lot of you are putting E first. Um, you're let's see e. okay you're gonna have to remember because i obviously can't remember <laughs> if, who uh, who has put what um so we will check okay and we will see um if any of you got this correct um so lots of you have had a guess okay so now i think it is time to uh, watch the video uh, another activity if you have the time you can ask your students to explain why so um you know, they've chosen the order. Let's say we've got B, E, C, C, A, D. You can ask them to explain to their partner why do you think it's in this order? And that way we're encouraging some critical thinking. OK, are you ready to watch the video? 
let's see what the video Isla says yes okay great so I'm going to start playing the video as you watch it I want you to try and put the sentences into the correct order okay so I'm gonna I could put the screen uh, the video full screen I'm not going to because I want you to be able to see the uh, the options over here so as we watch the video please uh, try and put these into the correct order Okay, can you hear the audio? Can you hear the music? Thanks, Kitty. This is Nick Nichols. He works in the woods of California in the US. He takes photos of animals and plants. The animals aren't usually easy to see, so it's a difficult job. He wants to take photos of this bird, the spotted owl. He puts on some special clothes, but the owls don't fly down. Now, Nick is leaving some food for the owls. It works! He can take some great photos of the owls. Next, he wants to take photos of a tree. But this tree is very tall. It's 100 meters tall. How does he do it? He has a special camera that can move up the tree and into the leaves at the top. They're ready to go. One, two, Three. And up it goes. The camera takes photos as it travels up the tree. These pictures go into Nick's computer. Then he can put the pictures together to make big photos of the tree. Why does Nick do all this? He wants people to see all the great things in the natural world. What a job! He goes to the woods. He wears costumes. He makes machines for his cameras. He goes up trees. He's a wildlife photographer. Okay, great. So that is the video. So what, what do you think? Did you like the video? Sam says yes. Okay, good. Arnie says yes. Yeah, me too. I think it is really nice to, you know, to see an interesting job like that, um, you know, from a different part of the world. And this is why it's called a school trip, this lesson, because you're, you're getting to see something that you wouldn't normally see. Um, so let's have a look at the task, right? Did anyone see out of these five things you can see on the screen here, which one of these happened first? So we've got Nick sends a camera up the tree. Nick puts on a costume. Nick gives the owls food. Okay, so Marianne's put the answers in there. So the first one I think was Nick puts on a costume. Okay, the next one was Nick gives owls food. The next one um, was D. Okay, uh, Nick takes some great photos of the owls. Uh, Nick sends a camera up a tree and the photos of the tree go onto Nick's computer. Okay, there we go. So we've got them in the order here. Okay, once we've put them in there, I can hit this button here and it tells us that we've got the answers correct. So well done, Marianne, you got them all correct. Um, did, if we go back to when I asked you to guess, did, did anyone guess correctly? Did anyone get that order correct? Just interesting to see if any of you were either very good at guessing or, or very intelligent. Faye says no. Okay, didn't get it right. Okay, but uh, I think some of you were pretty close actually from when I had a look. Um, okay, there we go. So we, we've got that first activity done. Okay, now um, we finished that activity. Okay, what, uh, what I would now do is I would ask some more questions, um, you know, to, to, to expand on what we've been watching there. Um, so, Nick, um, 
what's Nick's job? Can you remind me? What what does Nick what is Nick's job? Yeah, he's a wildlife photographer. That's right. Um, so he takes photos, but what other things does he do in his job? Okay, so he takes photos. Did you see any other types of activities? Yeah, he makes machines, right? Very interesting. So there's almost like a kind of um, engineering aspect to his job. He puts on costumes, right? So he gets to dress up to try and camouflage himself. Um, did you notice what was on his head on the costume? Did anyone see? What did he have on his head there? When he put on the costume, there was a helmet, but there was something on top. What was the, which animal was he trying to photograph? Which animal? He was trying to photograph an owl. And what did he have on his head? It, it was an owl. That's right. So he actually had a, a model of an owl on his helmet to try and attract the owls to him. Uh, did it work? Did the model owl attract the other owls? Was it, it wasn't successful. So what did he do instead? How, so it didn't, the, the owl didn't work. What did he do? Yeah, he gave them food, right? So that's always the best way to get animals or people um, to, to do what you want is to give them some food. Okay, then they're definitely going to do what you ask them to do. Okay, perfectly. So he, uh, perfect. He makes machines, he puts on costumes, um, he goes to the woods. What else does he do? What did he do? You saw him there going like this, okay, what's the other thing that he does? Oh, you can see these people in the tree, the scientists, where are they right now? So he takes photographs of the trees, but he also actually, what can we say? He also climbs the trees, okay, that's right. So when we say photographer, maybe we don't think of these other type of activities, okay, such as, um, yeah, I don't know, being hoisted into the tree, okay, using a rig, um, you know, building machines, um, dressing up, so lots of interesting things. So now my question for you is, uh, what do you think of, uh, of Nick's job? Um, do you think it's an interesting job? Would you like to do that job? How do you feel about his job as a wildlife photographer? Difficult job, says Arnie. Interesting job, but risky. Yeah, perhaps if you're going up into the tree. Dangerously interesting. Okay, so would anyone like to do that job? Yes, Kathleen says, yes, you would like to do it. Um, and again, here, interesting for our students, our 10-year-old students, maybe when we think of photographer in general, people will probably think of maybe, you know, a fashion photographer or something like that. But we can see that, you know, really there, you know, photographer has a very wide application. Um, and this, uh, this lesson we're looking at now, the school trip, actually follows on from a unit about jobs. So, um, yeah, interesting to see a different kind of job our students could try. Okay, so we're now going to, um, we're going to play a game, okay, we're going to do an activity, it's a game. Um, so can you remind me into the chat box, how tall uh, can a giant redwood grow? Okay, let's see if you can remember how tall. Uh, not 1500 meters. Okay, yeah, that's 1500 years. It was 100 meters. That is right. So I'm now going to uh, stop sharing and I'm going to uh, do a new screen share. I'm going to go over to my OneNote page uh, where I've got an activity lined up. So let's see if I can find it. It's here. All right, let's share. Okay, so um, we're going to do a kind of guessing game. All right. So um, a giant redwood tree can grow to 100 meters tall and it's huge and it actually it's about the same size as what you can see on my screen now. Can you type in so I know that you can see my screen? Yeah, it's about the same size as a full sized soccer field or football pitch, we call it in England. Um, so if you cut down the tree, if you laid it down, it would stretch from one end to the other. Um, and that might help our students to, to, you know, to picture how big that tree really is. It's absolutely massive. So we're going to play a guessing game. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to play bigger or smaller. All right. So I have selected some images, some things, and I want you to tell me if the tree, if the redwood tree is bigger or smaller or taller or longer or whatever than the objects that we're going to see. 
So here uh, in the picture there, what can you see? What can you see here? It's red and white. Okay, but what is it? It's an airplane, right? And uh, specifically, it's a Boeing 747 jumbo jet. So it's one of the biggest planes in the world. Okay, now I'm talking about the wing span. Okay, so from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other wing. All right, so I want you to tell me, do you think the tree is bigger than the plane? Okay, and the way I'd like you to do this, okay, um, I would like you to use uh, in your participant box, okay, you should be able to see um, the thumbs up and the thumbs down, okay, can you see that in your participant box, um, you should have a thumbs up and a thumbs down, okay, so if you think that the tree is bigger, okay, you're saying no, okay, everyone's saying no. Okay, we can't say, okay, let's forget about that idea. Let's change it. Okay, so instead, I want you to type into the chat box, okay? If you think the tree is bigger, write tree. If you think the plane is bigger, write plane. Okay, I'm sorry. I must have, uh, for some reason, not had the feedback turned on. Okay, so a lot of you are putting tree. Okay, so most of you think the tree is bigger. Okay, everyone thinks the tree is bigger. And you are absolutely right. Very clever. The tree is bigger than the plane okay or we can say the true the tree is taller than the plane is wide okay let's try another one okay what can you see on the screen now what can you see here can anyone tell me what this is it's a pyramid that's right where is the pyramid which country the pyramid of giza pamela you are right it is the great pyramid of giza so it's the biggest pyramid the, the tallest one that we have and and what do you think i want you to type in for me now if you think the tree is taller type tree if you think the pyramid is taller type pyramid okay so now now we've got a mix okay so we've got some people saying tree some people saying pyramid it's about 50 50 okay and i am going to tell you that in actual fact, this time the pyramid is taller. The pyramid is taller than the tree. So a lot of you got that right. Let's try another one here. Does anybody know what you're looking at now? Disneyland, that's right. And this is uh, the castle, okay? This is called the Cinderella Castle at Disneyland. So which do you think is taller? Do you think the tree is taller or do you think the castle is taller? Type into the box. Castle, tree, tree, tree. Okay, there we go. A lot of you saying tree. Okay, you're very good at this. Okay, um, yeah, the all oh, a few people saying castle. The answer is the tree. The tree is actually taller than this castle. Amazing. All right, we'll do one more. I've got more, but we'll just do one more. How about this? What can you see now? I wonder if anyone can spell this. <laughs> it's a T yes, T Rex, the easy way to spell it, a dino T Rex, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's right. It's a big dinosaur. Um into the box for me now, which do you think is taller? Is it the tree is taller or the T-Rex is taller? Okay, I think everyone is saying tree. Okay, well done. And you are right, the tree is much taller. So I've got some more, but we're not gonna do them. Okay, I can actually tell you Big Ben um, is the same height. Okay, this is about the same height, it's about 100 meters. Okay, and here we've got the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, you know, this is a really nice uh, way to recycle a uh, grammar point that they might have learned before. So um, we've done bigger, smaller, but I haven't told you how big they are. What I would do next, which we're not going to do because of time, I would actually get my students to, um, to look at the pictures there and to put them into order themselves, to discuss which they think is the correct order. Um, and here they're going to be using those comparatives. Okay, oh, I think that the T-Rex is smaller or shorter than Big Ben, okay? Or I think that the Golden Gate Bridge is the tallest out of all of them. So we can really get a nice activity where they're, they're recycling some grammar that they've learned. Um, I'm not gonna get you to do it because we don't have time, but uh, I would in class. Um, just in case you're interested, okay, I have put them in order here for you. Um, and this is the correct order. So we can see on the left, the, the high, the tallest one would be the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco at 227 meters. And the shortest one would be the T-Rex at 13 meters. So the redwood tree would go in here. It would be in third place, okay, out of these seven things, just a little bit taller than Big Ben. Okay, so 
why are we doing this? Okay, we're going to link this in, okay, into the next stage of the lesson, uh, which is the project. So I'm just going to do a new share. So let me stop sharing for a moment. And we're going to go back into the we're going to go back into the classroom presentation tool. Um, so here is the project, okay, down in the bottom right hand corner. And for the project, um, I think this is a I think it's a really fantastic project and it's make a size chart. So remember, this is for students who are about 10 years old. Um, so the idea is that they make a poster with a partner. So it's got collaboration, um, which shows the size of different things. Um, so on this one, we've got a blue whale, we've got the Statue of Liberty and we've got the Eiffel Tower. Um, so can anyone tell me, um, just type into the chat box for me, um, roughly, how long is the blue whale? How, well, not tall, because they usually be in the water. So just as a, an approximate value, how big is that blue whale, which is the biggest animal on the planet? Can anyone type that into the chat box for me? Right, okay, so Ria says uh, 20 meters, right? So we can see if we go left here, yeah, I would say it's about 25. So we can see, uh, maybe you can't see this very well, but we've got a scale, this is 50. So this line would be 25. So I think the blue whale is roughly at that level there. It's about 25 meters, not 12 foot. Okay, 12 foot would be uh, much, much smaller. So about 25 meters for that. Um, how about the Statue of Liberty? How tall is the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, it's roughly 100. You can see it's actually a little bit shorter. Okay, it's something like 90, yeah, 93. Someone's saying 93. That sounds about right. So it's a little bit shorter. So the redwood tree is actually a little bit taller than the Statue of Liberty. That's something which is quite surprising. Um, so there are a couple of ways we could do this. If we were in the classroom, the way that I would probably do this is I would do a gallery walk and I, I would stick um, different uh, objects or buildings or you know living things, animals around the room, a picture and some basic information. Um, I might give a few bits of information like the height, but also maybe the age um, and perhaps some other things. And then I would get them to walk around and I'd get them to choose maybe three or four that they liked or three, let's say three, and write down the information, and then they've got that information so that they can they can then start making their poster. Okay, so I would do it as a gallery walk. Um, that's one way we can do it. The other way we can do it is we can actually get students to re uh, research by themselves. Okay, we can get them to go home, and we can get them to use the internet to find things that they think are interesting to add onto their poster. So that makes it uh, more of a research project. Okay. Um, but as this is about it's a, as a lesson about science, um, I thought the most interesting way for me would be to do it a different way. Um, so I did a little bit of research and I found out that we can actually measure objects um, just using our hand and a tape measure. OK, so I'm just going to show you very quickly. I'm going to show you how um, I how I did that. OK, so it's using uh, basic mathematics, but it's easy enough for children of this age to do. So let me go uh, back down into my uh, here we go back into my OneNote and we're going to go down. So I actually took this from um, I found it online. Um, this is from an education site um, and it has a video okay, that teaches you how to do it and it explains why it works. So at a very basic level, I'll just explain it to you. So this is what I did. So this is a this is a an apartment block, okay, just opposite where I live. All right. Now this uh, 16 story apartment block. Um, yeah, 16 stories. And I, I didn't know how tall that was. So what I did and what the video taught me to do is to use my hand, okay, like this, okay. So I'm going to stretch my hand um, from the top of the thumb to the bottom of the finger. And what you do to measure something, you go outside, okay, and you make sure that you um, have enough space that there's nothing in between you that you can walk to the object that you want to measure. You hold out your arm as uh, straight as far as you can go, you close one eye and you use your hand, okay? And what you're doing by measuring, you want your hand to obscure perfectly 
the top to the bottom. So I've taken a photo. It was a bit difficult to take the photo as I was doing it, but you can roughly see here that the top of my thumb is right at the top of the apartment block and the, bot my, the bottom of my little finger is right at the bottom. There's actually a little hill here, which is why it looks like my finger is a little bit too low. So this is how you do it. And your arm must be straight and your hand must be stretched, okay? So that's the first thing we need to know, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're going to walk from here, from exactly where you are. So to get your, your hand in the right position, you need to go further, closer or further away from the object you want to measure. So when you're in the right place, your hand obscures the whole building. You're then gonna walk all the way to the building or the tree or whatever you're measuring using even steps. Okay, so I did that and I found out that it was 147 steps, okay? So into the chat box for me now, can you tell me? It's 147 steps. So what do I need to do next in my calculation? I need to know the length of something. Does anybody know what I need to measure the length of? So I've got 147 steps or 147 paces. Can anyone tell me what I need to measure next using one of these? Okay, Kitty says the length of my footstep and you're absolutely right. So what I did is I, I laid my tape measure on the floor and I, I did five paces, okay, five normal steps. And then I measured how long those five steps were. And then I divided it by five. Now, the reason I did that is if we just take one step from standing still, it's not gonna be a very accurate step, okay? So it's better to do five or even 10 if you can, and then take an average of that, all right? So let me show you what I did. So I measured my steps, five, five paces, it was four meters. So I divided four meters by five and I got 80 centimeters. So now what all I need to do is I need to multiply 147 paces by the length of my uh, by the length of my pace, which is 80 centimeters, so times by 0 0.8, and I get the measurement 117.6 meters. Now, that is not the answer that I want, okay? And this ratio that I showed you earlier, the length of your arm to your hand span is exactly three to one. So if you measure from your arm, okay, down your arm here, one, two, it, it's three, okay? It's exactly three from the uh, from your finger back to your eye. And I actually measured that as well. And I found out that it was very, very close to three. And it's the same for everybody. So the next thing we do is we divide this by three. And we then end up with a number. So I estimate that this building here that I can see from my apartment, um, by just measuring my pace and by using my hand, I measured this at 39.2 meters tall. Um, I actually found out by going on the internet um, that each story of this building is 2.8 meters, which means that the real height of the building is 44.8 meters. So you can see I'm about five meters away. Or another way to put it is that my estimate is 88% accurate, which really is good enough for our students to go out and measure things. So using this technique, your students could measure anything at all near them. Um, they can measure anything as long as you can see it, okay, and the, the ground, uh, as long as you can see it and you can walk to it, you can measure it using your hand. Um, so just into the chat box for me, um, I've explained that fairly quickly. Um, what, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think this is something that you could get your students to do? Okay, and Delik is saying yes. Okay, right. So, um, yeah, uh, let me see if I can copy this. Uh, no, I can't. Um, yeah, so this is something, you know, it takes our project rather than just them being passive and finding information, it gets them active, it gets them outside, it gets them actually doing something. There's a video here, um, which I'm not going to show you all of it because of time. Did you know that astronomers can use their hand? Okay, there we go. So actually, there's a short video. I learned this by watching this YouTube video. Um, I think this is the way that we learn everything these days, isn't it? Um, and I'm actually going to put this video for you into the chat box right now, um, just in case you are interested. 
um, here it is. And I also, and the video actually comes from this web page. It's called Exploratorium. As I said, it's an educational website. Um, and there you can actually use this. Um, you can find like the whole basis of a lesson there. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm gonna go back very quickly and have a look um, into, yeah, into the thing. Uh, into the CPT. So we can see here that we can, there was, you know, different ways we can do it. You can do it as a gallery walk, you can get them to research it, or you can actually teach them how to measure it themselves and make it a real science project. Um, I will say the final thing I want to say about the project, if you're doing it, you need to make sure the students know what you are looking for. So I would recommend for this project to focus on four things. So the first thing you want to focus on is the scale. So make sure that they have a clear, accurate scale up the left-hand side of the page. Okay, the next thing you want to focus on, you need to make sure that they have, um, you might wanna make sure that it is nice and neat. Okay, um, so we're gonna give, I'm gonna give a score for the work being neat. Okay, I'm gonna give um, a score for everything being to the right scale. Okay, so not just the scale here, making sure everything is in proportion. And the final thing I'm gonna give the score for is creativity. Okay, so how interesting they can make their poster. So it's important, I mean, you can choose any criteria you want. I'm gonna give them 10 points for each category. If you're doing a project and if you want to give a grade for it, we need to make sure it's very clear to the students what they are being graded on. Okay otherwise it's not fair to the students okay so when you're setting up the task you know show them on the board this is what I'm grading you on okay so this would be homework okay for the next lesson all right I'm going to uh, go back to my uh, go back into my powerpoint and just wrap up the session let's see if I can find it over here okay uh, so stop for a minute Okay, so just give me a few seconds here. I need to close, there we go. Right, now I can go in. PowerPoint. All right, and, uh, sorry, I'm actually, <laughs> I need to do a different kind of share. Uh, screen share advanced and portion of screen. Here we go. This is the way I wanna set it up, slideshow from current slide. Okay, right, now we are back in the right place. Okay, so yeah, I just wanna remind you what we've been looking at. So as I mentioned earlier, Look, okay, is our young learner program for uh, elementary or primary age learners. Um, interesting thing about uh, look something that makes it different to other programs it has quite short um, fresh lessons which are you know exciting for students and make uh, learning enjoyable because the lessons are you know compact um, it's ideal for schools that have fewer teaching hours available per level um, it gives young learners all the core language that they need and it also has a very balanced skill foundation and will help boost confidence um, it also has exam support that they need to use English successfully um, this is just a quick look at what a unit looks like so you can see here there are seven lessons in each unit and the unit opener okay which gives um, which is a nice a whole page photo uh, and in the teacher's book there are lots of ideas for activities to exploit those photos to make an interesting lesson. Uh, you can also see here the video lesson uh, these are really fantastic so all the video lessons feature um, uh, you know uh, children from around the world and they're always discussing you know, whatever the unit is about, these children are discussing examples from their own country. So it really helps students learn about, you know, people their age, but from all around the world and gives them ideas to then relate that to their own experience and to personalize um, those activities to talk about themselves and compare with other cultures. Um, Look also has a uh, very extensive uh, digital teaching support. Um, I was using today the classroom presentation tool, um, but it also has an online practice element, which basically is an online workbook. So students can do all of their homework online and the teacher can actually keep track of that. They can, um, they can track and assess how well a student is doing using the learning management system. 
Um, I'm going to ask right now, I'm going to do my second poll. Okay, if, you, if you're interested, if you've enjoyed the material we've looked at today, okay, I would just like you to complete the poll here. So if you would like us to send you a little bit more information about what you've seen today, about Look, the Look program, please type yes. Okay, if you're not interested, that's fine, and you can put no. So I'll leave that up on the screen and give you a few seconds, okay, to complete that. Um, if you've got any questions about, um, yeah, about the program, okay, if you click yes, we will contact you and you can, uh, you can reach out to us like that through the email we send you. Um, a lot of you are asking about a certificate. So yes, we will send you a follow-up email tomorrow. Um, and uh, the links to the certificate and to the recording of today's session will both be in that email, okay? Please make sure you check your junk mail folder as sometimes the email will get filtered in there. Um, we're exactly at uh, 11 o'clock, um, but I will give you the opportunity now um, if you would like to ask any questions, uh, please type them into the chat box now. Uh, or you can use the Q&A box, sorry. The Q&A box would be the better place to type your question. Um, while you're thinking of any questions, I'm going to mention next week's webinar. So next week, we have Mr. Andrew Tiffany, who is going to be doing a, uh, a lesson from our program called Time Zones for Teenagers. And it is a lesson for absolute beginners. Um, so it's the first lesson of the first level, starter level. So he's going to be giving lots of ideas, uh, which will be relevant to anyone teaching very low level students. Okay, you're not going to want to miss this one. Um, I'm going to put uh, a few links into the chat box. So I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment and um yeah try and get those links for you uh, so the first one i'm going to put in uh, are the registration links for andrew's session okay so uh, these are going into the chat box now okay so you should be able to see two links there there's one for 10 a.m or one for 6 p.m so if you click on the 10 a.m link it will take you directly to the registration page for next week's session i'm going to put um, another couple of links in here. Uh, the next one is for our webinar page. So uh, our webinar page, you will be able to, uh, if you bookmark this, you'll be able to find, uh, basically this is where we put up all of our webinars. Um, you'll also be able to navigate from there. If you click on past webinars, you will find recorded links to all of the webinars that we have done in the past. And the final thing I think that I would like to share with you um, is the, uh, yeah, here, it's the look page on our website. Um, so yeah, this is the, uh, if you want to find out for yourself some more information about look, click this link here. Let's see, I've got a couple of questions here. Um, I think this is from Diana. It says, are, are all look book series lessons related to nature? Um, no, they're, they're not. Um, um, our programs do tend to have, um, you know, uh, quite a lot of lessons about nature, but it's certainly not all about nature. Um, look is cross-curricular, so it also has lessons on science, um, it has lessons on history, has lessons on culture. Um, so you're going to be finding when you look at, uh, when you look at at look, um, there, there is actually a wide range of different themes and different topics there. Um, I got a question here. I'm not sure from uh, from Gareth. He says, "Can teachers use the software in our classes?" Um, so, well, yes, uh, you can. Um, the software, um, I mean, the software is designed to be used in conjunction with the the student books okay so students have the book okay and the teacher is using the uh the teacher is using the classroom presentation tool software so whether you're in the classroom or whether your students are at home you're teaching online um i would recommend that your students have the book for for both so that they can do the activities themselves in the book 
Um, if you're interested in getting the, uh, the software, if you hit yes on the would you like to know more question uh, that you can see on the screen now, um, we will contact you and you will be, uh, our rep will contact you. And if you're interested in purchasing that software, because it, it, it's not free, it's something you need to buy, um, then you can ask that question and they will be able to help you with that. Uh, some nice comments in here. Thank you. It looks like uh, people have enjoyed it. So I'm glad you've had a good time. Just looking for any other questions. Thank you, Diana. That's a very nice comment. Okay, great. So um, if, if we're still there, okay, I have actually got one more link that I forgot about. Um, I want to encourage you to go to our Facebook page. If you haven't already liked us, um, I hope you can go to our Facebook page and like us. Here is the, or follow us. There's the, our Facebook page there. Oh, I sent that just to Gareth. I want to send that to everyone. Um, yeah, if you, if you like us on Facebook, then you will automatically see, if you use Facebook, you will see all of our announcements. You will see um, all of our posts, um, lots of interesting, useful teaching resources and other things that you'll be able to find from through our Facebook page. Okay, so yeah, I'm glad that uh, a lot of people are saying they've had a good time, an interesting time. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I'm going to stop my recording now. Stop. <laughs>